Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are going to be looking at Space Simulator by Brixton Dynamics. So this game uh, has just been released on Steam, and actually I've played this game prior to its Steam release because it was originally available on iOS and Android, and it offered a pretty realistic space simulator. Now it has come to Steam, and I guess the big question is, does it offer something that Orbiter, which is completely free, doesn't? And right now, I'm inclined to say, don't bother with the PC version because the uh, Orbiter does so much more. On the other hand, on you know mobile devices, Space Simulator is still a really interesting piece of uh, software. So yeah, obviously you have a full cockpit here of the Apollo spacecraft, and if you want to perform the startup, you need to actually use the checklist here. So the checklist tells you how to go through all these different button pushes, but of course you need to find the various switches, and which are spread throughout the cockpit. So if you imagine, you know, you have a, a guide sitting nearby, that's great. But if not, then uh, you need to figure out where everything is. And the good news is that there is actually a, a trick that they will let you click on the various parts of the, the checklist and it will take you to the switches. But as you're seeing here, I'm trying to figure out which way to flip the switch. And it turns out that some switches need to be clicked with the left button, others need to be clicked with the right button. And it's not entirely obvious. You sometimes have to mouse over it to figure out which way to go. So that's me flipping these ones up here. Uh, may not be the best thing to do. In fact, you know, if you think about it, flipping the switch one way or another could uh, be bad if you flip it the wrong way. After all, we are in space millions of miles from home. Well, not millions, hundreds of thousands of miles from home. Right now, we haven't even got into space. So there, it tells me to hit the master alarm. So I click on that and then I can click to the fuel radiators and take me over here and so on and so forth. Now, if you're two, not wanting auto. to do the whole thing manually, you can button. basically click on the automated systems and it'll just like run through two. the checklist for you. Flipping the switches to the correct two, two. orientation and serenading you in a synthesized voice, which sometimes, well, sometimes mispronounces things, but sometimes it's because the, the source text is mispronounced or misspelled, such as there's a few nominals in there, for example. Anyway, yeah, you can obviously watch this in real time if you're really into it, but uh, as I said, I think I would stick with Orbiter 2016 until, you, until this gets a little more fleshed out. Uh, but having said that, the PC version does offer a pretty detailed scripting environment, or at least it set, suggests that that's what will come along at some point in the future. They've got a lot of documentation on their site, on their internal scripting, and they have talked about how the PC version will do full internal vehicle simulation. It won't just simulate the physics of the spacecraft flying and the aerodynamics and everything else. It'll also simulate the fuel flows, it'll simulate the electrical power, the thermal systems. Yeah, we can also, of course, see the exterior view of the Apollo 8 sitting on the pad. If you remember, Apollo 8 was the mission to fly around the moon. This was because they moved it up because the lunar module wasn't ready for testing in orbit. So they decided to fly to the moon and actually enter into orbit. There was some decisions early on. Uh, they were Some people suggested that they should just do a free return around the moon, but in the end, the... The engineers or whatever, the mission planners decided that they wanted to do a full um, lunar orbit insertion. And Christmas, the Christmas 1968, there were three astronauts orbiting the moon. There we go. We can follow this whole thing into orbit. We've seen this a million times in a million different simulations. Yeah, so well, let me just see here. Yeah, you can see that they still have the, the cap sorry, the, the cover, the capsule cover is still there. A lot of sims of the Apollo 11 let you look out those windows and see what you could see from the capsule, but that's not possible because there was a cover in place that needed to protect the capsule from uh, damage if the launch escape system fired, because you didn't want to have a rocket motor firing over the rocket, or over the, the windows, and potentially you know, causing more damage. Yeah, there we go. Telemetry shows current fuel and propellant values to be lots and lots and lots. Sound barrier crossed. We are passing through ma max Q and everything. So right now the PC version only offers Apollo 8. It doesn't offer any of the other missions. 
If you remember, well, if you've played the iOS version, you'll know that there's many, many other vehicle options there. And, you know, that's that's a nice thing. We can expect these vehicles to come along at some point. But right now, the glitchy graphics and everything else only cover Apollo 8. There's a bunch of camera angles you can mess with. Yeah, you, you know, you can take control of this if you like. You know, the original Apollos in theory had the ability to be controlled manually by the pilots, but no pilot was dumb enough <laughs> or risky enough, whatever, ballsy enough to try doing that. I, I believe that the Apollo guidance computer supported manual control all the way to orbit. There we go. Two planes staging, pyros armed, all systems are go. And now we're going to lose the launch escape tower because we are high enough and fast enough that we don't need an escape tower to pull us clear. There we go. So that was what that cover was there to protect us from. And finally, we can look out and see the world. So yeah, uh, I actually just want to take a look at the iOS versions for comparison. Now, this is running on an iPhone 6S. So this is a you know couple of years old, this phone. This is from, yeah, at least two and a half years old now. And you see the UI, not great. <laughs> I'm not sure it follows style guidelines. There's a lot of documentation here. And a big problem with iOS versions is that you can't really display the documentation at the same time as you are playing the game because you know, you simply don't have the screen real estate to support multiple things. But yeah, here's here's me selecting a mission here where you can pick the year. Let's put the Orion shuttle in orbit of... Wait, what's Calixto? Calixto? Uh, yeah, let's get into orbit of Titan. Titan has an atmosphere. It'd be nice to maybe fly down and land it. So yeah, you know, if you want to have a realistic space sim on your phone then Space Simulator is probably the only game in town. There are a couple of shuttle simulators, but they tend to be very limited. They tend to just show, allow landings. There's one that does landing really nicely. There's a couple of other options, but yeah, um, it's kind of a shame that there aren't any really good competitors to this. So, yeah, um... <laughs> It's very hard to figure all this stuff out and you would frequently need to be switching out and looking at other uh, documents to give you an idea of what you need to do here. Which button does what, how to use the autopilot. So paradoxically, it's best played on, say, an iPad with another iPad next to it so you can actually look at the documentation. But I guess once you get really good at it, you could then, in theory, fly spaceships on your phone on the train. Now, I've done it. I've landed on the moon. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't the easiest thing possible. Yeah, well, look, we're traveling down towards Titan, towards its thick atmosphere, so we can fly down. It looks like they don't do volumetric atmospheres here, because you know one of, one of the interesting things that we get wrong a lot is when you see these pictures that show different sizes of of moons and stuff in the solar system. Titan frequently is shown as smaller than it actually looks in the sky because the atmosphere of Titan is so thick it actually makes the apparent size of Titan appear larger than some of the other moons in the system, or some of the other planets even. Yeah, there we go, flying down here, and we could in theory fly this like a plane all the way down. It has landing gear, the game supports docking, it has MFDs all over the place with all the information you like, and there's even an Apollo guidance computer. Now, similarly, here's some other options here. Discovery from 2001, the X-15. Yep, we can fly the X-15, sure. Takes a few seconds to load, but there I am, strapped beneath the wing of a B-52. Oh, yeah. Time to go all Scott Crossfield here. Stage, drop, throttle up. And that's us flying away. So, oh, yeah, we do not need the Apollo guidance computer. Let's take a look. Uh, where's the manual controls here? Ah, there we go, manual control. Uh, one of the problems I will say if you try flying the space shuttle with this is that the manual control is on the same page as the miscellaneous, miscellaneous controls. So if you want to drop the landing gear, you have to switch away from manual control, hit the landing gear and then switch back to manual control, which can be kind of hairy as you're trying to do this at the very last minute, you know, just before touchdown. Yeah, there we go, high above. Now, of course, this model has a, a cockpit as well. You can take a look at the X-15 interior. Uh, not sure 
it's kind of hard to do when you have all these uh, you know virtual gauges on the screen i'm not sure how flyable the x15 is without that given that um you know obviously these games when they run on mobile they use on-screen controls the pc version doesn't support all that or doesn't need that so that's not such a big issue so yeah we can also yeah here's a the sls it supports a bunch of sls scenarios this is me on the moon in the altair which of course wasn't part of sls it's part of the the program that predated sls the constellation program and the cockpit on this doesn't look like the altair it looks suspiciously like the apollo lem yeah, they, uh, I wonder how many of those switches will end up getting simulated in the PC version. So yeah, look, you can definitely buy this if you're interested. I'm going to say that I, if you're looking for a space sim on the PC, go and get Orbiter 2016 first because it is free. And then, uh, you know, if you really want to, if you've got, you're interested in this, go and take a look at their website. They have a lot of stuff on scripting. It is very rough around the edges, but it's clear that the developers are kind of well-meaning. One warning, though, if you do buy the mobile versions, there's a comment about how there are extra missions, Apollo 13 and stuff, which can only be unlocked by giving the game a good review. You don't need to give the game a good review. You can give it a bad review and you will still unlock these missions. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.